I just know that God does everything well. He has wonderful people all throughout the world. That He has given wonderful gifts and talents. And sometimes He must send us to those people. And I'm grateful that He does. Mike's not the only one that's been a recipient of these wonderful gifts. <coughs> And we just need to be willing to be led of the Lord wherever He sends us. Katie just recently was sent that a gift was given to her daughter. Only a few in the nation were good at it. I don't know why God's chosen to do things that way, but. I'll trust him for whatever he has. One more time. Anyone else? Someone's holding out on me. You have your Bibles? Turn to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 22. Oh, that's right. No one's going to be dismissed to go to the church. I'm glad they know what to do when the pastor doesn't know what to do. I did have a quick announcement. The youth group is going to be doing the Walk for Life on Saturday, May 9th to support the Pregnancy Care Center. If anybody would like to make a donation and sponsor us, you can see any one of the youth group or the leaders, Wayne Home, Home, or myself, at any point between now and all right. Thank you. Any other announcements? Today in our news, we we see there's a lot of shaking going on. There's Christians being persecuted and martyred. Brother Elroy mentioned there's one martyred every five minutes. I didn't think I'd live to see the day. When I see such strong persecution against Christians as it is today, there's deathly sicknesses that's ravishing the entire regions. There's financial systems that are bankrupt. A lot of political problems in countries all over the world. There's a lot of unrest. This morning, I want us to consider the great testimony of King David. Found in 2 Samuel 22, verse 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock and Him will I trust. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to prepare our hearts and minds. If those, some of you that will be listening to this message or watching it on the internet, I pray for you as well. Today, this year, this is your time of deliverance. And I pray that whatever might be binding you, whatever the problem might be in your life, maybe it's a habit that you've been trying to quit for a long time. I tell you today that today can be your deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. David also said to the godly, in Psalms 112, verse 7, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. This morning, as you look around and you see other brothers and sisters, how many do you see that are operating and have this peaceful trust in their lives? I know that there's been times that I've met with a lot of older people who seem to be gone through some terrible and painful trials and they still had the joy of the Lord and they seem to be so encouraging <clears throat> and I've wondered what was it? How could they be so encouraging and happy and so steady in serving the Lord when they've gone through so many harsh things in their life? Have you found that to be true with many of your friends and some of your older acquaintances? As you shared and they talked about things, you just wondered, how did you get through all that? Well, God took care of us. We trusted the Lord, and He took care of us. I know I think about 
My father who had a painting business, I know that there was a time when he had around 10 men working for him. And I know he, I'm sure he had to struggle sometimes each week for a payroll. I can remember growing up, I can remember the men coming into the house and sitting on the couch and around the table waiting to get their, their check written out. My mother took care of those things. And I, and I think back and I wonder how in the world did he do it? <clears throat> How did he? How did he just? How did he do it? Elroy would know what that's like. You have to juggle and juggle and juggle, and 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 you, you just sometimes you the the men get paid and you don't get paid. I knew there was times it was like that. There was times he he spent every Friday got a paycheck, but it wasn't always a paycheck for him. And I know he had to juggle things around to get to make to make it that way, so they could get paid. And there's probably times he's, he's waited and waited and waited for money that he was expecting to come in to, to take care of the men he already paid. And there's just so many things that concerns. Was he concerned? Yeah, I'm sure he was concerned. And, and I can tell you if I would have been old enough to, to listen in on some of the conversations, <clears throat> I'm sure I would have heard my mother say, well, how are we going to do it? They, they, they shielded me from a lot of that stuff. I'm sure that those conversations happened. I'm sure that mother would say, well, why are we going to do this? Or where is the money going to come from? Or, you know, I'm sure that that conversation was there. But they somehow shielded us children from having to worry about that. God delivered Israel time after time while they were in the wilderness. They had great deliverances. They had experienced them. And yet Israel never seemed to have a settled confidence in the Lord of all the things they went through and experienced. Starting with the plagues in Egypt and then the way in which God sustained them in the wilderness. Moses admonished them. Thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee as a man doth bear his son. How many times have I told you that our Heavenly Father treats us like we treat our children. Here it's mentioned in the scripture as a man takes care of his son. That's how it is with our Heavenly Father as he takes care of us as children. As a man doth bear his son in all the way that he went, that he went until he came into this place. Deuteronomy 1 and 31. Moses was reminding Israel that God has protected you through plagues, brought you through the, the desert. He opened the sea for you to walk through on dry ground. He led you by fire and a pillar of smoke and gave you food from the sky and water from the rock. God has never once failed you. Why won't you trust Him to deliver you? How many more miracles must He perform? I think, how many times do we look at a situation like that and think, well, those people... They must have really been rotten people to experience all those things and still not trust the Lord. But I can tell you, we're even worse than that. Because we have more, more information, more testimonials, more that we could learn from and trust from and know that God is able to deliver than what they have. We have even more. You might be tempted to judge the Israelites. But we react the same way when we face a crisis. We wonder why God allowed it and how would we ever survive. And when it happens, our sin is, seems to be worse than Israel's. As I mentioned, because we have all these testimonies of God's faithfulness through the years. And if we could invite Moses to stand in this pulpit this morning... And before you today, he would say, Yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God who went in the way before you. The same words that he gave so many years ago to the children of Israel are so prevalent for us today. And God doesn't take lightly our unwillingness to trust him. And you might say, Well, but Pastor, God knows that I'm weak and he understands why I complain at times. But I can tell you that God has a very specific response to those who have problems trusting in Him. The Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth. That means He was angry. Saying, surely 
There shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land except Caleb and Joshua. Deuteronomy 1, verse 34, 35, and 36. So you can understand that God was angry. Only Joshua and Caleb were able to go into the promised land because they believed that the Lord would give them the victory. And so God advised the rest of the people. Chapter 1 and verse 42, he said, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest you be smitten before your enemies. In other words, if you won't trust me, you might as well not even try to fight your enemy, because you will be overwhelmed by them. And I believe this verse explains why so many Christians today go from one defeat to another. God has shown them that deliverance after deliverance, the enemy has gotten the upper hand, unfortunately, in many of our lives, still don't truly trust in God. The devil is able to toss us about mentally and emotionally because our heart isn't fixed on the deliverer's faithfulness. What a perfect song to sing for this message. Great is thy faithfulness. Isn't that your testimony through the years? Haven't you seen how faithful God's been? God's been faithful. Everything I can testify today that I was overly concerned about God took care of it. God took care of it. Why can't, why can't I get it through this thick head that he will take care of things tomorrow too and next week and next year? Why can't I get that through? Is that a sinful human nature? I think it is. I think it is. I think it's a sinful human nature to think that. Because he's been so good to me. He has been so faithful. Does this describe you today? Do you lie awake at night fretting over the worries of life? Like the Israelites, you tell yourself, I have a right to be discouraged. The future looks so hopeless, so bleak. But I can tell you that this kind of unbelief opens the door for the enemy to gain a stronghold. And so it came to pass when all the men of the war were consumed and dead from among the people. Chapter 2 and verse 16. And you might say, well, Pastor, what kind of God are you talking about? That's Old Testament. God isn't that hard on doubters who are under grace. But I can tell you in the New Testament, the author of Hebrews gives us this warning. Today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the wilderness. I was grieved with that generation. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Did you catch that verse? It was very clear. Unbelief is a departure from God. And I believe this is a key verse. In the same passage, we find the key verse. They could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. You see, when you ignore God as your deliverer, you dig yourself deeper and deeper into your problems. Do you ever wonder how some are able to have joy in the midst of their trials? 